And I think, you know, to, to, to call out authority and speak your truth and fight the system when you've got nothing to lose is relatively easy, really. Anyone can do that because what's the worst that can happen? And I think the real courage is those that have got something to lose, but still do it anyway and still fight anyway. And obviously, like I said, I'm, I'm not sure who you're referring to in terms of that podcast, but that they've looked at it and gone, mm, yeah, but I've got all these subscribers and I've got this lifestyle now that I like and I've got this endorsement with X, Y, and Z, so I'll shut up. Whereas the real courage is those that go, well, I'll lose the endorsement then. Well, I'll lose this then. I'll lose that then because the truth is more important. Gareth, you're, you're remarkably well balanced, if I may say so, considering the, the, the shit you must have gone through going, growing up. Um, is that something you've had to work on? By that, folks, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm referring to David going through the public humiliation and, and just the, the worst side of not just human nature, but British British thuggish culture as it can be. Um, was how how did you get your head around that? If if and again, I you don't have to answer anything you don't want to. It's no, know, no. It's, I, I I'll be honest. I went there to come back. So um, in my school years, I was a bit you know a bit sort of off the rails and whatever, and, and got expelled and things like that. And then. Um, when I became into my late teens, I was in punk bands. And so I lived in a tour bus for like five years, basically, and just drank and woke up on benches in, in places. And then I started playing beach soccer. Um, I, I got basically I was in the pub, obviously, and I had played football back in the day. I played over at Portsmouth Football Club when I was living on the Isle of Wight. And so there was a beach soccer tournament that was taking place the next day. And these lads are gone. Oh, yeah, mate, you used to play in gold, didn't you? And I was like, yeah, freaking million years ago. Why? And they said, um, well, we need a goalie for this game tomorrow. And I was like, okay, yeah, fine, I'll do it. I'd had enough beers to agree to it. Anyway, next day, totally forgot that I'd agreed to it. And my sister phoned me and was like, you're, you're supposed to be playing beach soccer today, aren't you? Because we're going to come down. I was like, you what? And, um, and so anyway, I went and I turned up and I played this match. I never played beach soccer before. Um, and had a bit of a worldie, really. And then um, ended up playing for this team a few times. And it was a bit of a laugh. And then I got a phone call probably about a month later saying... Um, can can you be in Marseille? Like, when can you be in Marseille? So my response was obviously like, well, who's paying? And I'll decide if I can be in Marseille or not. Why? And basically what had happened is the England squad were, were there playing World Cup qualifiers and someone had knocked over a coffee machine in the foyer of this hotel and it basically severed the, well, all but severed the big toe of, of the substitute goalie, right? So his toe's hanging off. So they didn't have a goalie. Of They've obviously phoned around all these other goalies that play in this league and, you know, I can't get out of work that short notice, can't do this, can't do that. So it's come to me. And obviously at that time I was playing in bands, so I could kind of do what I wanted when I wanted, really. So I agreed and I flew out to Marseille, sat on the bench against France, didn't get a kick, didn't expect to, to be honest, I was just there for the sunshine. So I sat there. And then the next game was against um, Greece. And um, the goalie, who was first choice goalie, had suffered with vertigo. I mean, there must have been the most blooming injury prone team in the world anyway he suffered from vertigo so he played the first period so it's nil nil there's three periods of 20 minutes in beach soccer he's um he's not right when he comes off the first period he's like so they obviously the managers turned to me it's like you're gonna have to go in and obviously my ass has fallen out I was like I've just you know this it's live on Eurosport I'm just here for a laugh and I went in anyway I saved a penalty and we won four nil and um and then that was it and so when I came back from France after that they were starting to prepare for this tour of South Africa, which was in about five months. And so I just thought, do you know what? Shawshank Redemption, get busy living, get busy dying. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get my head down and I'm going to make sure I go to South Africa. And so I did. And that sort of saved me a bit because it got me off the booze. It got me fit. I mean, not that I was an alcoholic, but I was you know, drinking too much, but it got me fit and gave me a bit of focus. And then I went to South Africa and, and played out there and then ended up in playing in Israel and Azerbaijan and Norway and all these like random countries that you'd never normally go to. 
Um, and that sort of focused me a bit. And then that was that. And then, um, yeah, that's me, basically. But, I, but I, I became grounded as a result of losing the plot, basically, rather than just being able to deal with everything. You know? How old were you, Gareth, when your dad was on, on Wogan? I know he's on there twice. But... Um, eight, maybe, eight o'clock. Uh, eight o'clock, um, eight years old. I'm trying to think the second one. The second one was years later, wasn't it? Um, yeah, they were both yeah. fucking fiascos, though, weren't they? Yeah, they were, yeah. 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 It was funny. It was weird, though, because, like, I went from him being... Like whenever you went around places, obviously this days before camera phones and whatever, but whenever you went out, people would stop him in the street and they'd want an autograph, they want to shake his hand or whatever. And it went from that to people shouting at him in the street and laughing and pointing in as a kid in, in the space of about 25 minutes. So it was very odd, I must admit, as a kid. It was just like, why is everyone being a dick? Um, so that was strange, yeah. But then, but what it also, it's one of those things, you know, when people say, I don't care what people think. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Um, but what it did is it, I, I don't think I'd have ever got onto a stage as a musician. I don't think I'd have ever probably gone out and played beach soccer all over the world and done all these things f almost fearlessly if, if I hadn't have had all that shit really. Mm -hmm. So, and it's the same now, like I'll say what I want. If I believe something to be true, I'll say it. And obviously you get loads of shit back for it. And, and I, I just sort of just laugh. And I'd end up getting messages quite a lot of people that I used to go to school with and whatever. They're just like, mate, I wish I could say the stuff you say. Cause I think it as well, but I'll just get, you know, mother-in-law or employer or guys across the road or whatever. So I don't bother saying it. Whereas I'm just like, well, I've been battered so much with it that I'll say what I want. Thanks. Just if we can just, this one thing I've always wanted to ask your dad, if I got the chance to, to podcast or, or speak to him was, that first Wogan show, was your dad becoming enlightened, Gareth, or would you say he was unwell? I don't mean like he was off the mark unwell. I mean that, it, like, how did his enlightenment come around? I, th I think, to be honest, what he would say, perhaps I've heard him say it before, like, it was like um, he basically came into so much information so quickly that it was basically like he describes it as someone just smashing the keys on a computer. Yeah. And in the end, the computer just freezes and it's trying to process it. And after a while, the, the little spinning icon goes and everything shows itself. But I think the point he went on Wogan was at that point where it was basically just trying to compute stuff. Um, but then at the same time, like I've seen that interview back and, you know, the tracksuit's pretty dreadful, but when they say, you know, he said he was the son of God. No, he didn't. He actually didn't say that. He said that we were all sons of the Godhead. Now, I don't see that as being so out there. What you're basically saying is that we're all brothers and sisters of the same force. You know, we're all one another. Yeah. Now, I'd, I'd, I find that strange that people would find that kooky to kind of think that that's the way it is. I mean, I think that's just most people think that, that we're all whoever put us here, whatever put us here, we're all one, aren't we? Do you know what I mean? Like I wasn't put here by him and he wasn't put here by her. It was like, we're all here together. So I don't, yeah, that whole yeah, son of God well, thing I mean, was weird for me. That's what the scriptures say anyway, isn't it? We're all born in God's image or, or to, to me, that's just a, a way of saying, like I say, we're all part of the universe. It's not, yeah, it's not out there, is it? No, that's the thing. And most of the people that would be taking the mic would be sat singing hymns in midnight mass. Do you know what I mean? And so it's like, well, which is it? Is it nonsense or is it not? You know, although one funny story, actually. So around about that time, we'd gone out for the day um, on the Isle of Wight, just as a family. And we went to a place called Godzilla and it's lovely. Loads of tea rooms. They've got a model village. I'm a bit of a train geek. So I'd love the model village, all the trains and stuff like that. And we're taking a walk to the top of the hill and there's this really beautiful little church, right? And this was when all this stuff was going around about, you know, Jesus, blah, 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 blah. And so we looked around the church and all of a sudden there's loads of people there, tourists, obviously a big tourist place. And all of a sudden the church caught fire, right? And I don't know how it happened, but it went up and, you know, it didn't burn it down, but part of the roof went up and whatever. And I just remember like some of the other tourists like looking like, what is going on? Like he's here, suddenly the church is on fire. This is a bit weird. And you knew, like, for a split second, people were starting to doubt. <laughs> like, what's happening? What's, what, you know, has he brought some, like, second coming thing and the, the church has gone up? I think about that sometimes. It makes me chuckle. Mm. 
So I went home and I, I, I found the video he's referring to, or one of them, and it was, oh my God. It was just a further moment of enlightenment. But I'd say that was the one that put me on the this side of the fence as opposed to like being in it's the one that got finally like really got me out of the matrix. But I remember back then, if anybody on social media media, media social media mentioned David, it would be like the 99 attack the one, right? Fucking using the you know the terms that people you all the all the CIA invented slurs right. Now it's the other way around. The one person that uses the conspiracy they, they get attacked by the ninety nine, or the one person that slags your dad off suddenly it's like oi, do you you know. Do you realise all of what he said is coming true and this kind of thing? And I just want to say I'm pleased to have seen that in my lifetime. Um, it's yeah, I think I think um, New York and Washington red pilled a lot of people, a lot of people, because that story is so like the official narrative is so ridiculous that even those that would go oh, bloody lizard, moon landing, flat Earth, whatever, even they with with that would be. I mean, I know a few people that believe the complete official narrative, but they believe, you know, the official narrative of everything because that's who they are. But most people, I think, have at, at least some very, very big questions about that whole thing. 